Hey, I was just about to get in the shower, but I couldn't remember if there were any existing Ableton tutorials that talked about the thing that happens when you like have an automation thing and then it like jumps to a new value really quickly and then it, it like it doesn't work correctly. Wait, let me. All right, so I, I have this um, automation here on this clarinet and this violin that are happening in this section where the clarinet is going this way. It's panning to the left and then immediately pans over to the right. And the violin is doing the opposite where it's going to the right and then immediately pans to the left, like that. And I'm, I've noticed something weird. Well, I've, I've been noticing this. You know, I set this up specifically to have the issue because I've been accounting for it. But the um, for the sake of the video, I've been noticing that um, whenever you do these really abrupt changes in automation, there is some weird stuff that happens, right? Like if you listen to this, or, whoops, I didn't have the track solo. If you listen to this, this hit here, which should have the clarinet panned all the way to the right and the violin pan, panned all the way to the left, it sounds a lot more centered. And that's because of the fact that this automation jump here is very, very close to the MIDI note. And I can detail that with an example. Okay, so here I have a clip which is literally just positive one DC for the entirety of the clip which essentially means that the waveform is in, always in the positive one position. There's no actual oscillations happening. Um, and so if I apply um, some gain, or not some gain, some automation on the gain to this um, clip such that it goes from zero decibels directly to negative infinity decibels. So you should, you would expect to see in the, in the result these samples to immediately clip down to zero from positive one. So if I freeze the track, we can look at the waveform and see what happens. And notice that that's not what happens. It takes around three milliseconds for this automation to adjust. And I've noticed that the amount of time that it takes for the automation to adjust between extreme values sort of differs between um, plugins, right? So if I set up another clip, right? So this is a 20 kilohertz sine wave, which is basically above the human range of hearing for most people. But I also have an auto filter playing on this, and I want to adjust the filter frequency so that it goes all the way from 19.9 kilohertz all the way down to the minimum, so that it should be cutting out this this 20 kilohertz sine wave basically instantly. But if I freeze the track once again and look at the waveform, and you can see, or you should see, oh come on, Ableton, yeah, you should see that this takes instead of three milliseconds. I'm going, to, I'm going to make this a bit louder so it's easier to see. It takes around like eight milliseconds for it to fully like smooth out for auto filter, um, which I'm not exactly sure why that's the case actually, but um, I'm pretty sure that um, it's because of the modulation that's happening in auto filter, right? Like you you have this um, like this LFO in auto filter in the envelope follower, which I'm assuming it's it's like your the sample rate of the automation is like um slower so that you can save processing power for the other modulation stuff happening which maybe is at sample rate i'm not sure i'm not sure um because i never really use auto filter anyway so i don't care but there's another example of some automation that is smoothed um but for the most part i notice this when i'm panning right so something that i do often right for um especially for my my tracks on um fatigue with box kitty where um, I will, I'll pan the kick a lot, right? When I, when I pan the kick, I'll usually just use like automation to do that, right? So if I if I turn on the grid here, right? If I just have a four on the floor kick pattern, right? And then I'm usually using utility to do panning so that I can put effects after it, right? So if I do this, where it's um, panning left and right, right when the transient of the kick happens. then because of the fact that this automation is interpolating between extreme values, um, there's a little bit of time, especially at the transient of the kick, which is, in my opinion, the most important part of the kick, you have a little bit of audio that's in the middle, right? So if, again, I freeze and flatten this audio, you can see that there's a little bit, oh, it should be here. There's a little bit of time at the beginning of the kick for maybe, um, yeah, like two milliseconds, three milliseconds, where the automation isn't fully adjusted. So 
there's a pretty obvious way to account for this issue, right? If you just look at this automation, right? And then literally all you have to do, just zoom way in and shift it over, like boop, 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 just a little bit so that it's just slightly before the transient of the kick. Yeah, so like the reason I'm doing this is because for this little bit of the automation, it's interpolating because the, the sample rate of the automation, I guess, is, is lower than the than audio rate. So you have to wait for it to fully interpolate to the new value, and then the kick hits. Um, so that's one way to avoid it. But yes, that's the, uh, that's the video. I uh, do a lot of automation. I feel like most people sort of assume like they're guttural reaction automation. Like, oh, it'll just, just be the go with the audio. But no, apparently Ableton's automation isn't that sample rate. It's got its own, its own random sample rate. Um, which I might actually be able to calculate. Give me a sec. Okay, uh, so calculations have been made, and the apparently the sample rate, at least for gain automation, and I'm assuming most other automation for things that don't already have modulation applied to them, is um, 333 hertz ish around there, like 300, 400 hertz, 200 around that range, which kind of sucks actually. And um, I'd say that 300 is significantly less than 4,400. So yes, hopefully that is helpful. As for the outro of this video, I've been streaming progress on, on an album that I've been working on. I don't know if it's going to be an album or an LP or an EP or something else, but um, I've been streaming on YouTube pretty regularly. You know, flash a graphic of the streams. Do it. Flash, flash. I've been streaming pretty regularly, and I also have a private playlist on my, on my SoundCloud at which you can listen to my progress on this project, which I'm very happy with so far. So you can also join my Discord server, Twitter, SoundCloud, all the other shit uh and do this stuff <laughs>